All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and today I've got a mixed bag for you, so let's just get straight into this. It seems like this was ages ago to me. I don't know about you. With this whole FTX thing that's been going on, it's just been getting more and more wild by the day. So we have had some positive news from the US CPI. I'm not going to spend any time on this because I've sort of covered it in prior videos. So if you haven't seen that, you can go and see that. I just kind of wanted to point at this situation. And I've shown this situation. If you're not new here, then you will have seen this before. You can see that I've outlined this sort of inverse head and shoulders pattern. Now we did sweep the lows and this seemed, when we were down here, this seemed like it was completely off the table. But I have, as you know, especially if you've been here for a while, I've been championing this blow off top move and we have finally caught back up to this. This no longer to me seems like it's out of the question. In fact, I think this is, seems to be to me the path of most pain. So I just wanted to point this out. That this is still very much in play. This is more in play and more valid than it has ever been. And I want to make sure that we're aware that this is quite possibly a outcome that we should be preparing for. I want to spend a bit of time on FTX because I created this sort of a few of these tabs here. I created this a couple of days ago. Then I took one day off and so much has happened in that one day that it's kind of difficult to go for it. I'm, again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I'm sure you will, if you've been in the crypto space for a while, particularly you've been following this closely. FTX was officially filed for bankruptcy. It came out that only 10% of their funds, their customer funds were actually backed by liquid assets. SBF's net worth went down from 16 billion to zero. This reminded me of a saying, there's only one shortcut in finance and that is to go from the top to the gutter. There's no shortcuts on the way up. Tether has reportedly begun freezing USDT addresses owned by FTX. This video shows the WEF, the Clintons, major banks are all involved in this. And on top of all of that, FTX then was hacked. I think this is likely an insider job, although this hasn't come out yet. And likely they've done this to escape with the funds. It also came out that the FTX website and the app could download Trojans if you went on it. So, I mean, this... <laughs> This is just getting more and more insane by the day. SBF from FTX and Caroline from Alameda are apparently on the run. So maybe they hacked the money and tried to run off of it. Who knows at this point, right? This is still a developing story. It also came out that SBF is likely responsible for the lunar collapse. It's also possible that he took down three arrows capital. Then he moved funds from FTX to support Alameda post 83AC collapse. This thing just gets worse and worse and worse by the minute. It's likely that there's going to be some cascading liquidations and we haven't seen the full extent of the pain yet. There's been rumors circulating that crypto.com could be the next exchange to go down. Apparently there's been some red flags for a while. Um, they had a sort of flop at the Super Bowl advert that wasn't taken very nicely. They had the slashing of headcount. They also had slashing in market spending. They also had their Crow, which is their own exchange token scheme that's linked to their credit card. That has been that has collapsed as you can see here went from 0.9 to, to worthless they've also had allegedly suspicious connections to other collapsed companies so we are seeing the sort of domino effect of this collapse from ftx we're seeing this continue to unfold crypto.com has pulled out of the uefa champions league a month or two ago so there's that as well not not the sort of thing you'd expect to see from a company that was strapped with cash and apparently they've also mistakenly sent 10 million dollars to some person one of their account holders. I don't really know how you do that. In the interest of full disclosure, Chris, the CEO of Crypto.com, has come out and said that a lot of what's generating this FUD, these ETH transfers, were actually made a while ago, a couple, three weeks ago. He said that Crypto.com proceeded to withdraw the funds to their cold wallets over the following days, and the entirety of the ETH was successfully withdrawn. He says it's confirmed here. Fund movements from Crypto.com custody systems were only possible between approved and whitelisted addresses to our cold wallets, hot wallets, and corporate account. He says, in this particular case, the whitelisted addresses belong to one of our corporate accounts and a third party exchange instead of our cold wallet. We have since strengthened our process and systems be to better manage these internal tra transfers. And that's all there is to it. All our systems operate normally, according to Chris. But can you trust him? I'm not saying he can't be trusted, but what I am suggesting is, if this week has taught us anything, it is that you should trust absolutely no one in this space. The last thing I wanted to say on this is FTX has economic hitman vibes. I don't know if you're familiar with an economic hitman. This is a real thing. There's a book that's most famous, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. I'm not going to spend much time on this either. Just to let you know if you don't know, an economic hitman are a highly paid professional who cheat countries around the globe out of trillions of dollars. Their tools include fraudulent financial reports, rigged elections, elections payoffs, extortions, everything else. The reason people do this is they would, for example, send an economic hitman into a country, have that economic hitman in debt that country, and then an entity such as the IMF can offer them a bailout. 
that comes with stringent stipulations and essentially puts that economy in the pocket of a controlling entity like the IMF. So this is what an economic hitman does. And this whole FTX thing to me has the sort of familiar symptoms of an economic hitman job. It feels a lot to me like as per my prior video with the WEF connections, the governments, the large banks, I wonder if they had set this whole thing up to cause a massive amount of pain so they could come in and buy the whole industry up cheap for cents on the dollar. I also wonder if they did all of this to bring in regulations. That remains to be seen. This is a developing story. I'm sure we will continue to get more news and updates on this. All of this is incredibly upsetting. Okay, not just for the people that lost money in FTX or the people that are going to feel the impact of this around from other exchanges going bankrupt or other entities, but this industry has completely lost sight of its purpose. Bitcoin was invented because the world needed a censorship resistant, peer to peer, inflation resistant currency with no single point of failure, or to say another way, decentralized. Most importantly, what we needed was a trustless system. Why a trustless system? A trustless system was imperative because never in human history has a human been entrusted with a power and centralized authority and then not abused their power. Humans, what we know from history, cannot be put in a position of power and then not abuse that power. If everyone bought Bitcoin, cold stored it and said, go away to all of these banks and governments, then no one would have been hurt here. No one would have been hurt, but instead people have been very silly and they've been chasing yield in a 90 volt asset. Okay, this is just greedy. This, this, this asset class outperformed absolutely everything that's ever come before it. And yet people still wanted more yield. They still wanted more gains. They still had to use leverage. Okay, there's really no need for any of that. They've also been going after meme coins just for the pump, despite most people knowing that those, those meme coins would eventually go to zero. We all knew these coins would go to zero, right? No one really believed that these coins were just going to exist 10, 15, 20 years into the future. But yet we still chased them and chased the pumps and didn't focus on Bitcoin and trustless systems. And worst of all, the industry participants have been just as untrustworthy as the people this industry were designed to prevent, to, designed to circumvent. I am very disappointed in this industry. I'm sure many people are very disappointed in this industry. That's not to say we can't recover. That's not to say we won't recover. I believe we will. But I think a lot of people need to take a good long look in the mirror. This industry has this saying, don't trust, verify. And yet many, many people just threw that out the window and started to trust exchanges. I have four main concerns with the market at the moment. Okay, the Wyckoff spring in Bitcoin is not yet confirmed. So if I show you this here. We'll come back to this in just a minute. But right now it has not confirmed. The FTX thing really could go either way. There's an easy way here where a large entity such as BlackRock decides to buy FTX and promises to return the customer funds. In, the, in that scenario, we will get a V-shaped recovery. We've seen this before with the Bitfinex hack where they issued a debt token that siphoned off the fees and repaid the customers that were affected in the hack. So it's entirely possible people could be made whole again. And if this was to be announced over the coming weeks, I expect we will start the bull market as planned. But there's also a hard way. And this could drag out for many months, create a cascade of bankruptcies and pain for many other financial institutions and liquidations and exchanges. We could go sideways and down for at least one more 60 day cycle and possibly even two. Another concern I have at the moment is the miners are under a lot of pressure and I'll show you this in a minute. And also, if this was an economic hitman situation, like I've already sort of touched on, then entities like the WEF, the government, the IMF, whoever is behind this economic hitman are likely going to have ended up with a lot more power than they had before. Regulations could also be quite irritating and slow down the progression of this industry. So amongst all of this doom and gloom, what are the positives? Well, one, do not underestimate the ability of one single headline to turn ball mode on. And whilst nobody believes this at the moment, nobody believed this was possible either. Believe me, particularly when we came down and swept this low, everyone was like, no, 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 2008 fractal, we're going down 50%. Nobody believed this, okay? So I understand if you don't believe me when I say that it could just take one single headline to turn the bull market on. But believe me, do not underestimate this. This could certainly happen. The second positive is the low is currently in and it hasn't broken yet. Three, only a couple of K are needed to confirm this Wyckoff spring. And I'll show you that in just a second too. And then four, this will show the light of Bitcoin and the importance of owning your own crypto and keys on cold storage. And most importantly, not trusting any entities, not trusting anyone in this space. We need to move past this if the space is going to grow and mature. No more trust in exchanges. No more not holding your own keys on cold storage. Okay.
So I've shown this chart before. I said, look, if Bitcoin can close above 17.6K, this becomes validated and rejection could open up a lot of pain. Let's see. So jumping into that chart, okay? If you've been watching the channel, you'll know this is the 10 year yield. I've been doing this over and over again, haven't I? I've been saying, is this what we're gonna do? So now I'm proposing perhaps we could do the same thing on this Bitcoin chart. Is this what we're gonna do instead? Maybe, okay? We haven't done it yet. But hopping into this view, you can see that one, this low is in, okay? So can we do this and chop around and then make our way up? Yes, would that be annoying and slow and a painful recovery? Yes, but just because we have this formation does not mean we have to take out this low. We also have to accept the fact that we have broken down from this blue line, the prior low set four months ago. We have broken down, retested, and now appear to be rejecting off. This could just as easily be a bull flag that proceeds a move lower as it could recover here. More time is needed. But all the while this low is in, we have a new 60 day cycle ahead of us and it would only take a couple of thousand dollars added to the Bitcoin price to confirm the Wyckoff spring that I showed you in the prior chart. I mentioned Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin miners were already in a lot of pain and selling the most amount of Bitcoin they had done in almost five years. You can see here the Bitcoin miner sell pressure is spiking. And that's not surprising because we were, they were already under pressure and now we've taken out that prior low they're under even more pressure. Many, many miners will have to switch off here, but of course it doesn't really matter because the hash rate will fall and then the difficulty adjustment will be performed and the miners that are left will become more profitable. Another positive in amongst all this darkness is the Coinbase weekly volume. Now you notice whenever we get this spike of high weekly volume on the Coinbase chart, it always coincides with major lows for Bitcoin. It's also worth pointing out for every buyer, there's a seller and for every seller, there's a buyer. Whilst people have been selling their Bitcoin, somebody has to have been absorbing this. The Bitcoin fundamentals continue to improve despite the price action. And we have seen Shell Oil Company is going to be bringing solutions for Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin is certainly not going away, even if a lot of the crypto and altcoins are. Over in traditional finance, the highest put buying in 14 years and many bears expected a crash. A crowded trade never wins. And this is one of the reasons I was so confident in this melt up scenario playing out. There's also been a massive drop of 45 basis points in just three days following a 75 basis point hike. Unheard of. Pivot. Is a pivot possible? Could a pivot be the catalyst that sends Bitcoin into a bull market? The last time this level was reached, hedge funds were in big trouble. Remember, hedge funds are trend followers. They do not try to find bottoms. They will wait for this uptrend to be established and then they will all flip long. Right now, they are all short. And of course, as I've been saying over and over again, that could well be providing fuel for one of the biggest and most hated and least understood rallies that we have ever seen. Continuing on with this blow off top thesis, the stock market, we can see here the nifty 50 leading as expected. The USD also dropped the most since early 2009. We know what happened in March 2009. The market bottomed. The stock market did indeed bottom. And here you can see the dollar has made it all the way to 106. Is some kind of reaction bounce, dead cat bounce here reasonable? Yeah, I would think so. I would think something like this is most likely. Stock positions are looking quite constructive at the moment. We should at least make it up to 4100 on the S&P over the coming weeks, in my opinion. NASDAQ continues to look constructive. I like what I see here above this big horizontal level here too. So we'll see how this goes. Long and strong continue to push. The Dow, look at the Dow go. It's out of the final resistance line. So does this mean it couldn't roll over? No, it doesn't mean that. Of course, anything is on the table, but is a massive run up to 40K possible in line with this melt up situation? I think it might be. Taking a look at the VIX, the VIX is still falling. Remember how well we did here to capture this long and move up. I think we're gonna see something like that. I'm still lining this up at the moment. But if we can bleed down here and then break out, I think that becomes a long. The UKX working on a backtest, breakout retest. Is this a long breakout retest resumption? Is this a trade? Probably not for me, to be honest. I have enough equity exposure. I have started to scale into some of these, as you can see. I want to see Bitcoin confirm its spring before I start to get fully exposed. Gold is flying on the weakness of the dollar, which is to be expected. This does look a little overstretched in the short term, but I will continue to push this trade. Bitcoin, as I've said, the lows are likely in for this cycle. Can this cycle fail? Yes, it can. Has it failed yet? No. I think all we need is a little bit more recovery here to get bullish, but until we're back above this blue line here, until we're back above 17.6, it's difficult for me to get bullish. And really, confirmation at 18.2 is where you'd want to see the price go before you could be completely flipping long in this situation. 
So a bit more patience from me. Be keeping a close eye on the dollar to see what the dollar does. Like I said, I think this is likely going to get some level of bounce, dead cat bounce before it can roll over. And the yields have likely broken down now. So again, a little bit of a reaction and then we can roll over. And I think we will start to see this melt up unfold. Till Bitcoin and crypto get some clarity over the FTX situation, we're likely not going to see much bullish price action out of the chart. But as I said, do not underestimate the ability for one headline to turn this thing around incredibly quickly. If you found value here today, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like on the channel. Subscribe if you're not already. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.